This segment of the news is brought to you by Desert View Hospital, providing emergency medical care around the clock at 360 South Lola Lane. Learn more at DesertViewHospital.com. Physicians are not employees or agents of this hospital. News is also brought to you by Smitty's Cards and Coins. Would you like to know what your collectibles are worth? Come by 2281 Postal Road, Unit 4, across from the post office. Welcome back to News 46. Here's this week's News Across Nevada. A recently released state audit shows that Nevada's mentally ill residents are living in taxpayer-funded homes with human waste, rodents, mildew, and other filthy living conditions. Assemblyman Jim Wheeler says he will push for criminal charges against the providers. The Division of Public and Behavioral Health says there is no excuse for the filthy conditions, and the deputy administrator has been replaced as a result of the report. The team is now working on getting the homes certified. The Nevada Department of Transportation will be crack filling a 15 mile section of State Route 159 in both directions from Blue Diamond Road to just east of Red Rock National Recreation Area from January 23rd through March 1st. Work will take place from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. daily, Tuesday through Thursday, between mile markers 0 and 15. A flagger and pilot car will safely escort motorists, cyclists, pedestrians through the one mile long construction zone, resulting in up to 20 minute travel delays. Crews will begin just past Red Rock National Recreation Area and work southwest towards Blue Diamond Road. Perched over a mile above the valley floor, Dante's view provides some of the most expansive views of Death Valley. The site was used as part of the 1977 movie Star Wars A New Hope. The National Park Service has awarded a construction contract to improve parking and new viewing areas while protecting the native landscape at the scenic point. A new bronze tactile model of the area is also being constructed and will be located at the Overlook. The project was made possible through private donations and park entrance fees. Dante's View will be closed temporarily to public access from January 23rd to early April 2018 so that construction can be completed. The Nevada Department of Public Safety and other law enforcement agencies conducted a community-based offender reporting initiative on Saturday, January 13th in Las Vegas. The initiative offers offenders with transportation challenges in various zip codes the ability to comply with monthly reporting requirements without leaving their community. By providing temporary community-based reporting centers where offenders can report close to home, the division anticipates that monthly office visit attendance will increase and absconder rates will decrease. During the nine-hour event, 14 parole and probation officers set up a temporary reporting location at the Las Vegas Metropolitan Substation located at Harmon Avenue and Pecos Road. The initiative is another step towards achieving the goal of working together with fellow Southern Nevada law enforcement organiz organizations in order to accomplish the mission of the Parole and Probation Division to enhance public trust and community safety and provide assistance to the courts and the parole board by providing professional supervision of offenders to promote their successful reintegration into society. This is Deanna O'Donnell. That's your news across Nevada. Thanks, Deanna. 56-year-old David Turbin and his wife, 49-year-old Louise Turbin, have been charged with 12 counts of torture, various counts of a lewd act on a child by force, fear or distress, abuse of a dependent adult, child abuse or neglect, and false imprisonment. A California district attorney spoke to the press today about that horrific case. The DA painted a picture of physical and emotional abuse allegedly perpetrated against their third children. The Paris, California couple is accused of keeping their children, whose ages range from 2 to 29 years old, captive in chains and malnourished in their home. One of the children, a 17-year-old, managed to escape last week and called police. That teen said that the escape had been planned for two years. And the couple, whose $13 million bail each, has them facing up to 34 and 94 years in prison if convicted. Most of the Turban children did unfortunately suffer from severe caloric malnutrition and several have cognitive impairment and neuropathy, which is severe nerve damage that results from extreme prolonged abuse. Police say David and Louise Turban could 
punish the children and would often do so by beating them and tying them up and choking them. That punishment is said to have lasted for several weeks or even months at a time. Evidence suggests that the victims were not released from their chains to go to the bathroom. The children were allowed to write in their journals. Now hundreds of those have been taken into evidence. The children are extremely emaciated. Some who are adults, authorities first believed were children because they were so underweight. Wait. Well, the Clark County coroner says that the remains of Stephen Paddock, the Las Vegas man who shot and killed 58 people and injured hundreds of others at the Route 91 Harvest Fest on October 1st of last year, were given to his brother Eric this morning. Officials say due to security concerns, they felt it was important to deliver the remains in a secure manner, which they did. Yesterday, the coroner released the cause and manner of death of the 58 victims who tragically died. All were gunshot wounds to various parts of their body. The manner of all victims listed was homicide. Regarding the suspect, Stephen Paddock, the manner of his death was suicide, and the cause was a gunshot wound of the head. And stay tuned to lo local news. We'll be right back. We'll be right back.